Hello everyone, very good afternoon. And the topic for today is how to orchestrate the DevOps tools together. How you can bring in different DevOps tools together. Let us begin with understanding what DevOps is friends first. What are the different tools in DevOps? Then we will see how to orchestrate them together. Friends. Of course, that is important, right? And how can we orchestrate and how many tools can you orchestrate is also the question. What do you understand by this term called as DevOps? Currently, there are there are projects which are being built. The current process, the current model, is this not sufficient that industry is all talking about DevOps and DevOps tools? Why? Let us see that, friends. Let us see that in today's tool, today's session. So friends, let me, before I move on to the slides, let me quickly talk about what is the current process? What happens in the current process in current organizations? Why we are all looking towards DevOps? So friends, I'm sure all of you are very well aware of a software development lifecycle, SDLC, right? First and foremost, before SDLC, let us say application. Application. What is an application? What is an application? Application is a piece of code that provides you a feature, a requirement which your user has given. You have built that application to give you a to, to give a fee functionality to the user. That is an application. Now applications are of different types like desktop applications, web applications, embedded applications, mobile applications. We all know the development of these applications. Let us specifically talk about embedded applications. All the e-commerce applications, let us say, take this example let us say you are working in an organization in your organizations you are developing this application e-commerce application with this application so many features you must be built like order product right and uh, payments right payment gateway registration and so on you will have different sections or different features we will call them or we will call them different services that you will be giving to your user friends as part of this application correct let's say four features you are providing to your user how will you build this application how is the how do we build this application right there is there will be three things friends three major things in any application that we have to give to the user three major components development testing deployment right development testing deployment you will use different sdls you will use in any development we are doing any small feature also we are developing we will use the sdlc process software development life cycle will be the different phases that you have in the development life cycle are first you will code you will write the code based on the requirements given to you then you will test i'm writing on a high level print you will start testing them print after you have tested after you have tested you are going to set up the environment your production environment or any other environment where your actual end-to-end -end testing should be conducted so operations right and then you will deploy then you will deploy once you have deployed your code in the production environment you are going to monitor it, these are on the high level these are the five phases of any development life cycle you do right writing the code testing the code deploying the code monitoring operations is setting up of your infrastructure servers on which you are going to deploy your right friend so far we have been from when on it industry has been into picture we have been following this sdlc process but this sdlc process is implemented in different models in the industry Earlier, some years back, we used to work with waterfall model. Any application that you want to build, you will go with a waterfall model. That means each of these phases will be built step by step. First, first development of all the features will be completed. Then testing of all the features will be started. Then deployment will be done for all the features together as one single application. Of course, we all know the default uh, uh, challenges and uh, difficulties we all had in the waterfall mode right Mo mostly we would find the defects user defects will be there at the end of the session and end of the 
deployment only we would get to know the errors secondly only small projects we would like to go with waterfall model big projects will be difficult to deploy using waterfall model because any changes cannot be accommodated during that time. right any changes means we have to again raise new request new project request has to be raised so these were some of the drawbacks with the waterfall model so waterfall model was not waterfall model was used very very commonly in most of the organizations earlier when the applications were small simple not many features were there okay simple application small projects we used to go for waterfall but you know it is french we have applications which are embedded applications they provide authentication authorization security they provide persistence data right and session data is maintained plus there are hundreds of features coming in with the application it is not possible to go with the waterfall model when your application is complex we talk we are all talking about micro services now small small services given to the user right friends so when micro services is in the top waterfall model is not suitable so we the, the industry moved on to agile friends industry moved on to the agile model what is agile model i'm sure you all know we all have been working in agile model i myself work with agile model very good among the time agile is also called as an iterative model friends iterative model what happens in iterative model each service each service or each feature is taken let us say first order feature will be taken right order feature is taken for this feature friend what do we do we will develop the code we will develop the code developers will develop the code they will develop the code friend after the development is completed testing team will sit with them and we will test the code friend no your friends in this particular agile model what happens development team and testing team they work together friends dev team plus test team they work together qa team and dev team they work together friends here in agile model right it, in this we will take we we call something called as sprint sprint it is a two week or three weeks development phase wherein we develop the feature each feature we will take we will take the feature develop it test it so developers and testers are working together in this particular model agile model and then this after the testing is complete after the testing is complete this develop the code is shared for feedback with the user friends right once the user gives a go ahead all all right friends awesome developers you have developed it correctly testing team you have done it correctly i am happy with this code with this feature go ahead and deploy it only after that deployment will be done right similarly let us wait for the deployment i will write it later not right now. similarly let's say next feature will be started then after two weeks next feature will be started products feature will be started in the products features again you will do the development you will do the testing and then there will be a continuous feedback given to you by the by the user friend user will tell okay products feature is also okay or any changes are there they will reflect the changes to right here friends develop in the agile model there were certain tools used by the teams like development teams you started using build automation tools. testing teams started using test automation tools to quickly deliver the product quickly give the product or the feature to the user okay but friends what happened even though even though the feature was developed within time given to the user but deployment did not happen deployment did not happen in the agile model deployment was only at the end after all the features have been built only at the end deployment happened right the reason is here in agile model development and qa team are working together for continuous development continuous testing but deployment the the support team deployment is taken by operations team operations team okay or we also call them as support team right so who all are members of support team network team members your uh, virtual machine people who provide you virtual machines your ops team people who do the deployment people who take care of your servers db admins your security team they all are part of operations right no friends in agile model the disadvantage was though the development and testing was happening in small small features in small small phases any defect is there was fixed immediately and it was 
also presented to the user for approval and but the deployment happened only at the end though the development happened quickly within 3 weeks you had the development but deployment happened only after all the features were done right again in deployment here friends no tool was used by the team no tool was used by them no automation tool they went with the legacy way of deploying the deployment by installing manually installing the servers and manually installing the deployment scripts in agile model no tools were done no automation was there in deployment phase also under agile model so in agile model dev and qa spoke to each other they were aware of each other's difficulties but the deployment team were not aware of each other's they were not concerned about their challenges okay all right so then that the, the challenges were what suppose we had to set up the infrastructure for, uh, for uh, let's say order feature is built using java so uh, for deploying the feature order feature java is available in production and products feature is built using python python is not available changes have to be done on the servers so or new servers have to be brought up to set to deploy the products feature these updates have to be done by the operations team and they will take their own time to provide the required infrastructure in order to do the deployment that will take good amount of time friends because no tool is there no automation is there manually they are going to do the setup for the virtual machines install the operating system install the servers and then deploy the application do the qa activities and then bring up the servers in the production environment for the users to use this is the legacy way this is the current way where wherever in the organizations you are using it because of which there was a delay to the users friends because of which there was a delay to the users in giving the so then came into picture friends devops friends came into picture devops with the devops friends it is we are not making any changes in the current project you can with this session i want you guys to just to ensure this particular line is clear to you that the devops is not one single tool friends it is not one single technology it is not a team friends devops is nothing but your development team plus your qa team plus your operations team working together friends working together your devops is nothing but dev team your qa team and your develop operations team working together so devops is development plus operations it does not mean you are doing development and operations by separate team no the same dev team is going to do the development same qa team is going to do the testing but in your agile model the same agile model you are also adding operations so that means when you are developing the order feature here also you can take the same iterative model when you are building the order feature one you will start the dev activities parallelly your operations team will start setting up of the infrastructure needed for order like if they need a tomcat server on that they need java 8 on that they need certain framework operations team is also going to start working so testing will get completed then friends operations team is going to start deploy immediately deploying it as it is fixed get it approved by users and then deploy it deployment also will happen then start feature 2 start the development for it start the development for it do the testing for it then give it to the user for approval then give it for deployment everything will happen in one go for every feature micro services take each feature develop it using a separate technology deploy it immediately on a server micro services architecture which is what we follow now and devops is i am not saying any new team member is going to start working on it the same development team is going to work same qa team is going to work ops team is going to work no here friends if they are same people only the same people are working how is it that you will now be able to deliver your product to team because when we talk about devops we are saying that we are talking about faster delivery quicker delivery quality product is being delivered because friends devops definition says stop using the traditional way of software development and start using automation tools automate all the manual processes with the help of 
tools that it, you have in the market and for faster for a better velocity at a faster velocity you deliver your product to the customers start using tools or manual processes now it is your task as a devops admin as a devops engineer if you log if you join in it is your task to look into your project what are the manual processes in development what are the manual process in testing what are the manual process in deployment what are the manual processes and change them and start using tools implement the tools to automate those processes thereby you are implementing dev we have nowadays every day we have scrum calls right i am sure everybody of you know we, we all have scrum calls every day at 9 am or 10 am as per your project who all are part of the scrum calls developers and testers and product owner and the scrum master but if you have devops you are implementing devops in your project you are following the devops model then even the ops team is going to be part of your scrum call they will also know what development team is doing and how they have to set up their infrastructure they have to be ready for the deployment right and each feature will go at the one go with help of tools now with the devops comes into picture one click deployment one click deployment that is what is goal for today's class one click deployment what do you mean by one click deployment that means with the one click in one of the tools you are going to use an integration tool with one just one single click your code has to be deployed your code has to be built it has to be tested and it has to be deployed in your server with the devops it is very much possible to orchestrate multiple tools together to do the deployment fetch okay so this this was a quick introduction from my side let us move on to the slides now friends these the, let us see here friends different tools that devops provide what is the definition of devops devops says start using tools and automate every step of your project friends every step of your project okay now friends these are the different phases of an sdlc which we spoke planning code build test deploy operations and monitor now in each of these phases friends you can use different tools to manage your code if you are into the development team or if you are writing a code now you should start using git or version control tools like subversion bazaar mercurial git can be used git github can be used to manage your code friends every phase that you see here has a code has a tool friends can you see this slide have a look at this slide friends okay each phase has different tools associated to it but what is important this part is important friends see in agile model also we have been using these tools like as a developer i have been using git i have been using maven as a tester i have been using selenium as an ops guy maybe some of you must have been working with container so you have used docker or wine right or you would have used a uh, 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 puppet if you have been into industry for some time you would have been using puppet for configuration management or if you are a monitoring uh, if you are into monitoring and administrator you must have used a monitoring tool for sure like cloudwatch spark or nagios or prometheus or grafana any tool you would have used but have you used all of them together have you used all of them together no right friends with devops we do this process friends using an integrated server integration server like bamboo hudson jenkins you can integrate all of these tools together so that your code can be picked up from a source code repository it can be built that is converted into a word file jar file it test cases it can be tested thoroughly once there are no issues it can then be deployed using containers in your infrastructure friends and then can be continuously monitored using monitoring tool in case of any issues the the uh, the mails or notification can be again sent back to the development this process can be achieved this process is called as devops every team member should work together to integrate their steps friends okay only one person administrator will be there who will take part of integrating all of this code that is also a scenario in many industries friends many organizations okay with this friends comes into picture few terms which is continuous 
build, continuous testing, continuous deployment, continuous delivery. Let us talk about it quickly, friends. Version controlling, friends. What is version control? With this, friends, with all of these four things, I'm also going to talk about the slides that are coming in later. Okay. First, we will talk about version control. These are also principles of DevOps. Okay. So, first principle of DevOps is version control. Friends. Version control is maintaining your source code. With DevOps, friends, is coming up multiple tools. Tools, you have to write code, friends. Whenever you're talking about tools, it's all about coding. Anyone, developer, ops team, or testing team, if you are using a tool, you have to write the code to manage the tool. It is not a front end. Uh, very few tools are coming up with the front end with the GUI where you can just click, right click, uh, or you know, click on the button to perform that. All of these tools with DevOps are command line tools. You will need to know some scripting languages, some programming languages to use these tools, friends. Okay. One such a tool is version control tool. What is version control, friends? Version control is three things, friends. Who is writing the code? Where is the code maintained? And what changes did you do, friends? Right? Right, friends. So today I have written some piece of code. Let us say it got deleted. Okay, or let's say we are people of 10 team, team, team members, 10 of us have written the code. All of that code is available at a low, at a shared drive. Now, who wrote which code? What changes made by developer 2 were mess, did mess up the entire or maybe there was a fix given in the source code. Right, there was a fix given in the source code. Who gave that fix? Which developer gave that fix? Did that fix spoil the entire code or did it mess up the code? Suppose you deleted few lines of code, okay, and you want to get back those lines. Is it possible to get it in a notepad? You write few lines, you remove it and save it. Once saved, it is permanently deleted, right? Those five lines are permanently deleted. You cannot get them back. But the French DevOps says that start using version control tool. Start maintaining your source code in a version control tool. One such a tool is Git to French. Here, let us talk about it. Git is an open source tool, friends, where you can maintain your code. Not just the developers, but the ops team also will maintain their infrastructure code, their containers code. Okay, this Git, friends, anybody can use Git, friends, or uh, one of the uh, any organization. If you see here, so many organizations are using Git. Friends. These are very few, but every other, even freelancer developers and team organizations, startups are using Git to maintain their code, friends, right? Let me show you. Let me show you uh, a structure here. Now, what is a Git, friend? Git is a distributed version control tool that will allow you to contribute your source code at a common location. Let us say we have six developers working here, friend. The or even your team members. It doesn't mean only developers, testers, and ops team. Now, here first user he will maintain. This is his laptop. Friend. This is his laptop. He's written some code here. He will maintain his code in this remote repository. This remote repository is called as GitHub. Friends, I'm, all, I'm sure all of you have heard about it. GitHub. All of the team members can contribute their code at a local, at, at a common location called as remote repository. The code contributed by dev1 or user1 can be used by user3 also, friends, because it's a common repository. Anybody can access it. The advantage here, friends, is the Git here tracks every change that you have done to your files. Every user, whatever change he has done, they will track, Git will track it, friends. That is one advantage of it. Right, friends. Okay, so let me show you one, one of the examples in Git, wherein any, one of the organizations, one of the organizations is maintaining their source code on GitHub. So I have queried this project to get it's available on GitHub. This is the remote repository friends. GitHub. In this GitHub, if you see here, these are the this, these are the different contributors. If you see, 1400 contributors are there to this project. With Git to friends, you can get to know which contributor added what pages okay to this particular repository. Friends. Let us take this repository. Okay. Uh, let me go to the one second. Let us go to the project only. If you will see this source code, 
basically friends we maintain the code in the form of branches like development team will maintain their branches testers will maintain their branches i think i'm not in the correct project just give me a minute i went to the users here okay so this organization has 1400 contributors to this repository see here we maintain branches maintenance branch next task to be assigned seen reviewed task to do task right and if you go to each of these folders let us or if you go to any of the folders here in the folder friends you can find out what are the changes and what who did what changes that 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 is what is tracked by the github friends here git generates a commit which is a, like a transaction okay it gives you what changes who did what See here, some lines. The green color shows that the new lines which were added by this user, right? Red color will show what lines he removed and what date, what time he did it. That details also will be there, right? So GitHub is a version control tool which keeps track of the changes that are done by each user to the source code. Thereby, first of all, you have a common repository where all of your source code is. Once you have a repository where all your source code is, you can manage the source code, right? You can pick up all the source code from here, build it, and deploy it, right? You don't have to manage it on your local server, right? This is a common repository. You can see each developer what changes he have done, and you can manage their code also. See these lines were removed, these were added. Tomorrow, if you want to get back the code, you can always get it because Git tracks everything. git is one such tool which helps in continuous version control right user will write the code add the code user will write the code add it continuously they will keep adding it to the github branch okay the next thing friends is next thing which comes into picture is friends continuous integration friends continuous integration continuous integration is continuous integration is nothing but taking the source code taking your source code from where github so other version control tools are mercurial subversion but git and github are most commonly used and git lab is also coming up in the market now next step is version after version of after your code is available what is the next step friends once your source code is available what is the next step correct friends absolutely right we will build it friends building is nothing but compiling your source code reviewing the source code unit testing the code and finally generating a war file and integration testing and to and testing of the source code right no friends you take some source code and you compile it you develop it sorry you review it and you test the code. all of this can be done with an integration tool friend this this cycle of automating the process of picking up your source code compiling it compiling it and unit testing it and generating a word file is called as ci friends continuous integration i'm sure you all have heard ci cd pipeline ci continuous integration pipeline let me show you this with a demo friends basically we use continuous integration tools like jenkins friends to implement continuous integration friends. so this is the front end of jenkins okay i will show you if i have a pipeline job here okay so using a pipeline friends you can take your source code okay i have a source code given i'm picking up my source code okay with that friends you can you can take the code check out here means it's a stage so using jenkins you can create stages friends it's a integration tool which will pick up your source code from github it will compile your source code review your source code you need to test it and package into a work everything can be done with one single tool called jenkins one click tool is jenkins friends which will help you to implement continuous integration now how are these steps executed you must be thinking build automation tools like maven ms build pybuilder gradle and these are used friends with jenkins to perform compilation and generating a build friends these are developer tools friends they use it we as a devops if you are using jenkins developers will help you with the commands to integrate them in jenkins so i'll execute this pipeline and show you what i have done if i show you here i have written some code here friends in this code what i am doing i am creating stages 
I am taking a repository here, friends. My class code repository I am taking, and we are trying to compile it, review it, and test. See how will how will it get generated? Okay. So this is also called as orchestrating multiple tools with the DevOps. With this, with Jenkins, friends, I am orchestrating three tools, friends. Four tools. First is Git, from where my code will be picked up. It has just completed. Picked up the code from Git. Okay, you can see the output here. Compile the code. See here, it picked the code from where? From Git. It picked up the code. Then, friends, once the code has been picked, it is using Maven. It is using Maven to execute the code. Friends, compile the code. The tool that is used next is Maven. Friends, to compile. MVN here represents Maven. Okay, to compile the. Once compile is done, what is the next thing it is doing? It is reviewing the code. That is also done. Once it is reviewed the code, right now it is trying to execute it. Uh, okay, my slave is offline. It's going to fail. Okay, no problem. It is going to fail because I am trying to execute it on a slave. Okay, unit testing is being done on a different machine, and then it will pack metric check it and package it. Friends. Then it will package it. Okay. Okay. Now this, all of this can be done with Jenkins integration. This is called as continuous integration pipeline. CI pipeline. Now what is CD pipeline? It later takes some time to execute. Let it complete. Next difference. Delivery and deployment. Very important thing. Continuous delivery, continuous deployment. Let us see the difference between them. What is continuous delivery? What is continuous deployment? Very easy, friends. Very easy to understand. I will just show you with the diagram. Here. See, friends. If you are, if you are, you will have, uh, you have multiple environments, right? Dev environment is there, test environment is there, staging environment is there, and then you have your production environment, right? Correct. Okay. Now, friends, see here. If you are using Jenkins, I will take Jenkins only as an example. Let us see. Any integration tool you can take. Jenkins is the most common. If you are using Jenkins to complete, to compile your code, to test your code, okay. Once the testing is done, you have to do deployment, okay. You have to do deployment. If you are using Jenkins to deploy your code, the tested code in the staging environment, okay. Till the staging environment only, it is called as continuous delivery. Using Jenkins to pick up the code from so from get. Okay, compile it, test it, and then deploy it into your staging environment, duet environment or staging environment. That is called as continuous delivery. Continuous delivery. Okay, this is called as delivery. Okay, next to friends. Suppose you are using Jenkins, the pipeline code which I just showed you, friends. Uh, if you want to run such pipeline code, that is to pick up the code from Git. Test, uh, compile it, that is build it, test it, and then deploy it into the staging environment. If in the staging environment you will do a testing, if testing is passed, after that, deploying it directly into the production server also. If you are using a tool to deploy your code into the production server, is also then it is called as deployment, continuous deployment. Many organizations are going with continuous deployment. Many of them are going with continuous delivery, wherein the deployment will happen manually. They will take this downtime, or the request will be raised with the users to get the downtime, and on the specified date, deployment will happen. Okay, that is continuous delivery. But if there is no such a requirement, immediately as you will click in Jenkins, your pipeline will start. Pick up the code from Git, build it using Maven or any build automation tool, test it using Selenium. Stage it, uh, complete, uh, de deploy it in the staging environment, complete the testing, and then deploy it in the production server. That's called as continuous deployment. Next thing is, how do you do continuous delivery and continuous deployment? So there are tools like container orchestration tools and configuration management tools. French. What they do, French container orchestration tool. Let us talk about it now. Okay, let me quickly go there. We have seen Git, we have seen Jenkins, and I have also shown you pipeline as a code. Now, Selenium is a tested tool, friends, which will help you to execute your test cases. Okay, using this automation tool, you can uh, do your testing on different browsers. 
and you you can you will here is where you need a programming language either java python to write your scripts okay now i was talking about continuous delivery friends that is docker friends using docker you can do your deployments friends you as a container earlier friends we used to use virtual machines on virtual machines we would install operating system we will install a tomcat server or apache server or nginx server and then over that we will deploy our application gone are those days friends we now do everything as containers friends what are containers what are containers three things you need to understand here friends containers are nothing but images friends okay mm, let me tell you this thing. suppose let us say i'll give you very simple example let us say i have a user okay and uh, let's say that that's myself and i have created a code i have written a code here using java using java 8 i have written a code okay an application code i have written here in my laptop this is my laptop i have written and the operating system i have used is uh, centos 8 let's say i have used centos 8 for it okay now my the one more friend of mine comes in and says that hey sonal i also want to check your application code is written correctly or not i also want to add i also want to write few features into it give your application code okay so what will i give him will i give him my laptop or will i give him uh, uh, everything no right i will just give him this application code i'll convert i will build this application code into a word file and i will give him or i will give the source code only to him right right so what will happen my friend let's say the user 2 he has let's say he has a windows machine okay on the windows machine he has java 10 okay on this he placed my application code on this he got my application source code and he is trying to run it will it work friends give me a quick yes or no will this code work here on his machine he has windows he has java 10 and he has got his application code over here will it work or not work no right it will not work it will of course not work right it will not work we will get we will get environment dependency issues environments are not same java 8 is needed to run the app java 10 is available it will not work so what should my friend do he has to he has to create a virtual machine create a operating system centos 8 install java 8 and then run the application then run the application instead of that instead of that there is a much better option available in the market friends what we can do i can in my laptop whatever operating system i have does not matter just i will install docker i will install docker okay and i will create my application code using java 8 whatever it is i will write the application code with the help of docker i'm going to create a package a container is what we call i'm going to create this package in this package i will tell what operating system i need in this package i will also put down the application code java 8 okay for programming and i will also put my app code also i will place this is the package one we call this package as an image friends image is what we call in docker this image i will create friends now my friend comes up developer to a user to comes up and says let it be whatever is there in his machine it's okay he just needs docker on his machine okay and he will say hey sonal give me your code i want to run your code i will give him this image he just needs to run this image he just needs to run this image application will be successfully deployed he will be able to access my application from his browser without any issues because the image has all the dependencies container is a process which has its own environment its own network its own uh, libraries resource resources and your application code that image when run will create a container container is nothing but a running instance of your image these containers are lightweight and you can create them within seconds okay so nowadays everyone create such images for their services for every service you can create such image and in production servers you just run this images so the the infra team don't have to do any dependency setup of their one they just need a docker on their laptop on their servers docker is what they need friends you need to know which image to run on the docker correct that is that is need that is that base that base knowledge is needed okay friends now friends after this 
I have one more question. So this is the same thing. Okay, I must have used this diagram here. Same thing. Earlier we used to use. Okay, we used to create uh, such virtual machines over which you can now run your content. Using the image is what you create your containers now. Using this images is what you create containers. Docker Hub is a library where you maintain your images. From Docker Hub, your in your staging server, you can pull that image, run the image in your staging server, and then if the testing is done successfully, you can pull the same image and deploy it in your production server also. Containerization is a platform which will package your application, its dependencies together in the form of your app, in the form of an image. You place that image in a Docker Hub. It's a repository thread. Pull the images from there to deploy your application. For this, you need Docker on all the servers. You will need the same Docker. No, same Docker version will be needed. Even at least you need that Docker which supports that image. Yes, every user should have a Docker to run the images. Docker images are platform independent. Now, friends, I have one more question here for you. Now, the question comes to you, to, to you all is, the question which comes in, we have created an image. Okay, we have created an image for the application. Let's say the image name is app. Okay, you want to deploy it. Okay, in your infrastructure, if there is only one, if there are only three servers, let us say, there are three servers in your infrastructure. On this, you want to deploy your application. I told run your Run your application, run your image on all these servers. Run your, run your image on all these servers. Your application will be available. Provided on all the servers, you should have Docker. Right? This is what I just explained. On all these servers, you should have Docker. Here also, you should have Docker. Run this image. Run. Where is this image? Image will be in Docker Hub. Your code will be deployed successfully. You will be a container will get created. And your application will be available for you to access. Okay. For this, we have multiple concepts in Docker friends like port mapping, volumes, Docker swarm, okay, Docker uh, compose. Different com concepts are there in Docker to implement how we can implement this. It's not possible to explain in one class. Okay. Let us say the, in three servers, you were able to deploy your application. Now the question comes in infrastructure, you have 100 servers. On 100 servers, you have to Pull this image and create a container. How will you do it, friends? How can we do it? Manually, is it possible? No, friends, not possible. You have to create 100 servers. On 100 servers, you have to run this image. You have to install Docker on all those servers. You have to run, start Docker. You have to pull this image and create a container. These four steps you have to do on 100 servers. Is it possible to do it with manually? No, not possible, friends. So for this comes into picture called as configuration management tools. Configuration management tools are tools which will allow you to set up your infrastructure, allow you to write code to set up your infrastructure, to, in, to install packages, to create files, to create images, to create containers on multiple servers at one go. That is configuration management. There are three tools like Puppet, Ansible, Chef, which are the most commonly used tools in the market. Puppet, Ansible, Chef, French are the most commonly used tools in the market that are used for configuration. Puppet being the oldest tool, which is the most commonly used configuration management tool, but it is, it is an open source tool. It works on master-slave architecture. Here, the agents pull the configurations from the master machine and apply them. Now, let me show you. So, we write in this over here, as you see, we write code here on the master machine. This code is written as to what changes do you want to do on your slave machine. Okay. And the slaves will pull those code and apply the changes. Let's say you want to create a file on your slave. You write the code here. Puppet will pull the code. Every 30 minutes, it pulls the code. And that file will get created. These slaves can be from 100 servers to 200 servers on all the servers file will get created. One single code you have to write here on the master machine. Okay. One such important tool is Ansible Friends, which I really like and everybody likes to work. In Ansible Friends, you write playbooks. Friends. Playbooks are simple codes written in YAML, which is a file format, not a scripting language. 
using this print in but using ansible you write the code on ansible master machine which then the host pull in to make the changes okay i will show you a demo of this okay so here friends and i maintain the you can maintain the code in your uh, let me stop this guy one second friends it will go into error so let me just delete this guy just a second pause it okay all right it's continuously playing it let it be there now i'm going to do one more thing this is the last scenario continuously orchestrating your continuously orchestrating all the tools now friends if you see i have created a playbook this is an ansible playbook wherein what am i writing i've written a code here in yaml in yaml french the code here is very simple to understand i'm sure you all can understand it i'm installing tomcat on my server i'm i'm having a group of web servers friends some 50 servers and on all those 50 servers i want to install tomcat i want to install docker i want to start docker then i want to pull my source code from a repository there is some repository available i want to pull the source code from the repository once i pull the source code from the repository i want to build an image i want to build a docker file that means build a docker image and then i want to run the image to create a container once the container is created i will be able to access my application friends now my application name is address book friends and i'm going to show you the deployment for it right away live friends and this deployment is going to happen on multiple servers friend not just one server multiple servers a group of four that are part of my web servers okay my, i'll open one server and i will show you i think it should be up and running so this is my slave machine ansible host machine okay and friends the advantage here with devops is you you are going to create or run this entire setup installing your servers installing the packages deploying your code picking up the code from github deploying it okay everything you are going to do through jenkins with one single click friends i have written a pipeline code here friends i have written a pipeline code here which is going to pick up your code okay it is first going to pick up your repository from git it is going to clone the repository and then it is going to run that playbook for you ansible playbook so in my jenkins friends what have i done in my jenkins this is what i am doing friends just to show you in i am integrating git okay let me use this for faster access i am integrating git with maven with uh, docker which will create the containers and with it ansible because ansible is going to do the deployment and docker containers we are you going to use docker to create the container but ansible is going to deploy it on multiple servers all of this is going to be triggered through jenkins fetch now friends let us execute that pipeline and you will see that i will just run this pipeline and you will see that let us build this it's going to pick up the code from github it is going to pick up your ansible code also from github okay and this playbook if you will see here every step will be executed one by one first it will pick up everything from git and see here what's happening installing tomcat starting tomcat on all the servers it will do that installing docker starting docker cloning the repository build the image container created container has been created let us see if on one of the servers i will log into one of my servers and i will see if there is a container which got created right now see here 21 seconds ago there was one container which got created with this image and what is the let us try to access the application so this is called as continuous deployment to friends in jenkins i can add a trigger that if there is any change one minute friends if there is any change on my source code automatically this job should run got it right my application is deployed i can deploy it anywhere you guys also can access this application i'm giving you the link try to access it okay you guys can also access my image 
okay so here friends you can also go to your ansible playbook and set a trigger that execute this playbook every one hour execute this playbook if there is a change in the source code execute this playbook every 15 minutes right so your source code will be continuously being deployed on your server continuous deployment ci cd pipeline right i hope you have enjoyed today's session thank you so much friends bye bye everyone